Hey, what's up, guys? It's Sean. So our Potomac ladies are back. Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 7, Episode 1. Let's get right into it because they did not waste any time with the drama, y'all. Like, they got right into it with the storylines, the drama, and, like, I'm really excited for Episode 2. Please like, comment, subscribe to the video. Um, I love talking to you guys in the comments. I hope to grow the community and just talk to you guys and everything else like that. So, yeah. Let's get right into it. So I got some notes here. So you got the girls, the ladies. You got Giselle, Karen, Ashley, and Robin. They all meet up at the park. And they're just discussing Ashley, her divorce, and this and that. Ashley, Ashley arrives last out of the four. So when Ashley gets there, there's asking her like what's going on. She's like, Yeah, we're getting a divorce, we're getting separated. She starts Ashley starts going on and on about them just not being compatible sexually. And you know, they're slowly just kind of like drifting apart as a couple, and you know, they're gonna get a divorce. So Giselle is kind of beating over her head, like a divorce, a divorce. I think Karen might have been like, Are you getting separated? So I think they kind of just kept beating Ashley over the head with separation and divorce, and she kind of was getting like tongue-tied and twisted. A little bit so she kept saying like divorce but also separation or you know they're headed towards a separation which will eventually lead to a divorce right so then the lady starts talking about mia mia's cancer scare me going online posting all that stuff about her having cancer or you know might have cancer so she had to go to john hopkins and get you know testing and things done so Giselle is just like, it's weird. I think she's lying. Like, it just doesn't make sense. She posted one thing and then she went back and edited it and posted another thing. Giselle being Giselle, she's automatically going to like always want to feel justified and vindicated when she's always trying to find the worst in the situation, or always trying to find the worst or nitpick the situation. That's just what Giselle does. Giselle's never like, did you guys see Mia's post? Like, you know, I'm really concerned for her. Like, maybe we should all talk to her. It's like, she's lying. She's this, she's that. How could she? Like, this is why I don't... Giselle is just like a headache. She just functions off of... And I, I tweeted this. I'm like, Giselle functions off of drama and just dysfunction. Like, nothing can ever just... um be what it is when it comes in Giselle's world. Like it's always like a backstory or something else has to be going on in order for it to make sense and in order for Giselle to be justified in how she feels. So Karen's just basically like, look, I wouldn't have ran to um, Instagram or social media about my, if I had cancer or, you know, a serious health problem like that, especially so early on, it's a little weird. It's a little, she, Mia done, had, Mia did things differently than I would have, but Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. Let's talk to her. You know, we'll figure it out. So I think that's when Karen also said, like, she's going to be having a spring fling party. She wants to get all the ladies together. And maybe, you know, that'll be their chance to kind of talk to Mia. Next, we get to Candace and Chris. So Candace and Chris are going to the doctor, I guess a fertility doctor. So Candace wants to freeze her eggs. They're talking about, you know, maybe having kids, maybe not. But they're still not sure of when they really want to settle down and you know begin to have babies so candace is like let's just freeze our eggs before it's too late so she's like look you are working at a restaurant now you're a manager you're coming home at one two o'clock in the morning like i can't raise a baby which you you know you're doing that and he's like well how do you expect us to raise a baby if you're still trying to do your music career and you're doing a lot of things that require you to just be like on the road and on the go all the time like how do you expect to uh, for us to raise a baby if if you're not if your your schedule's not consistent either so they're kind of button heads when it comes to that but candace and chris they're always button heads but i feel like they really love each other so that's what's going on with them they're trying to figure out when's the right time to have the baby but producers are asking candace like when do you want to have a baby and candace is like i don't know it's always changing uh monday i might want to get pregnant by tuesday I don't want it anymore. I want to focus on my career. So I feel like Candace is still just not really serious. Chris already has two kids. So I don't know how, I don't want to say desperate, but I don't know how much of a desire Chris has to have any more kids, especially um, considering that Chris isn't even really financially stable, so to speak, or as financially stable as Candace. So yeah, I don't think Chris really cares to bring in, a, me personally, just being a fan of the show and watching, I don't think Chris really cares to bring in another baby, um, to be honest. So uh, we move on to Sharice and Robin. They're meeting up at a restaurant. It's good to see Sharice's back because at the same time, it's like, I never really understood why they got rid of Sharice. Um, because at the same time, I know she had something going on with her husband and her divorce. I heard like producers kind of got rid of her because she had a lot going on, but she couldn't really show or film it. But at the same time, it's like, what about Giselle and all, and half these other women that are on Housewives? They have so much going on that they, that's never really on camera, but they keep bringing them back and bringing them back, bringing them back. So Robin goes on to explain while she's sitting down with Sharice that 
Sharice is basically the real grand dame. Sharice is like the nucleus and she brought all the women together. Robin goes on to explain that she actually met Giselle through Sharice. But we already knew this. Like if you're a fan of the show, you already knew that Sharice kind of helped like bring some of the girls together and bring some of the girls to the producers and stuff like that. And that's kind of how we got like Robin, Giselle, um, I think Karen. I think that's how we got like the four or five of them, the, some of the OGs. That's how a lot of them got on the show because of Sharice. So Robin's going on like, if you want to be technical, the Grand Dame title belongs to Sharice. Um, no, it belongs to Karen. Like you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. Like in, at the end of the day, Karen did what needed to be done when it came to being on reality TV, which is why, you know, she's she stayed on the show so long she had more of a star power more of an entertaining storyline than Sharice did so at the end of the day I feel like the whole grand dame term came about because of the show so whatever Robin's saying because Sharice is like the nucleus blah 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 well Sharice Karen has something that Sharice did and that's why Karen's been on the show for seven seasons and Sharice hasn't so sorry Sharice but um, uh, Robin and Sharice go on to talk about Ashley. Sharice is just like, I never really understood Ashley and Michael's relationship. It's always been weird. It's always just been, you know, secrets and, and just gossip and just and just different uh, things that just never really made sense when it came to Ashley and Michael. They start talking about uh, Robin wanting to get married, but she need to she needs to figure out the prenup. Producers are like, do you even still want to get married, Robin? And Robin's like, um... And she like starts rambling, but then she's like, wait, what's the question? Like Robin doesn't, I honestly think Robin and Juan are content with, they already tried the marriage thing. Now they've been back, they've gotten back together and it seems to be working for them. So I don't see why they need to get married. I think it's just like pressure from the show, pressures from being in, you know, your friend groups and stuff like that to, makes you feel like you need to be married. If, if marriage doesn't work for you, then it just doesn't work. Sometimes people get married and it doesn't even, it does, same thing with people having these big lavish weddings and they get divorced as opposed to someone who might have a shotgun wedding or a small intimate wedding and they end up getting, and they end up staying together forever. So it's like, at the end of the day, you do a lot of things to please other people when you really need to focus on what works for yourself. So Robin's still just in a, in a limbo about when her and Juan are going to get married. Um, and she's talking to Sharice about a prenup. And Sharice is like, yeah, girl, you need a prenup. Um, she's like, because I spent almost $500,000 in just lawyer fees alone. And yeah, my husband was the breadwinner, but I stayed home. I took care of the kids. You know, I held the fort down. And Giselle's like, I mean... Well, they're basically the same person, Giselle and Robin. Robin's like, <laughs> Robin's like, well, um, I don't think you deserve half of his money. Just like I didn't think I deserved any of Juan's money. And uh, Sharice is like, girl, are you crazy? Like being a wife is a lot of work. And if you do what you're supposed to do as a wife, you do deserve something. So Robin's like, well, I'm more of the breadwinner and I don't want Juan taking any of my money. But when Juan was the breadwinner, uh, Robin said she didn't really want any of uh Juan's money. Girl, you say that now until you're out on your ass and you're trying to figure out how you're going to pay for the kids, how you're going to pay for housing, how you're just going to like maintain the lifestyle that you're used to. So yeah, get a prenup, Robin. We get to Mia's house. So Mia's having like a barbecue slash like family dinner with just all of her family. So we finally get to, we didn't really get to meet a lot of Mia's family, but we saw, you know, more than just her mom. So Karen arrives, Karen comes over. Oh, actually, before Karen comes over, Mia's just moving around the house. Her family's there, they're, they're eating, they're talking. And Mia's mom was like, so how's everything going? How, like, you know, did you hear anything back? And Mia's like, about what? Girl, you just had a cancer scare or whatever. Like, that should be like the first, that should be in the front of your brain almost every day when you're waking up. Your mom's asking you, like, how are you feeling? What's going on with you? And you're like, about what? Like, I'm not saying Mia's lying about this whole cancer thing, but, um, Something just don't make sense. Like it just doesn't. It just doesn't make sense to where, um, you know, when I first saw Mia had that post about cancer, I was like, oh my god, Mia might have cancer. But like just watching the show, and just also just seeing how Mia just kind of like flip flops and her stories never really make sense. I can see how like after a while you might be like, Mia, why are you doing this for just a storyline? Like why are you like serious? Like I understand, yeah, you might have been scared and you know jumped on it, but at the same time, it's like. Why did your mom have to like beat it out of you for you to be like, oh, mom, I'm in a clear. Like, I don't have cancer. Like, why? like that should have been the first thing you talked about. I don't know if maybe producers are telling her like, you know, hold on to certain things until, you know, we start rolling. But it's like, why did your mom have to be like, so um, how's like, you know, how's everything going? It's like, goddamn flying here. Why did her mom have to ask her like, 
It just flew past the camera. Why did her mom have to ask her, like, uh, hey, Mia, so what's going on with you? And, like, how are you feeling? She's like, about about what? Her mom's like, about the cancer. Like, how are you? She's like, oh, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm in the clear. Like, it's just kind of like, what? Like, that just made me, like, kind of side-eye Mia. Like, okay, Mia, like. And then she's just kind of like bubbly. Like, I'm not sitting here saying that you can't be optimistic or be in like, you know, good spirits, especially if you hear, you know, good news that you don't have it. But it's still just like how she's moving around. It just doesn't seem like somebody who was so distraught and down and out about almost having cancer. That's just that's just my um, that's just what I take from watching this episode. So her mom was just like, you know, so Mia, like, how is it? How's everything? She's kind of like, huh? About what? Oh, we're in the clear. I found out yesterday. So you found out like almost two days ago and you haven't told your mom. Girl, whatever. So uh, Karen arrives and they basically kind of have the same conversation. Karen tells uh, Mia like, hey, Mia, you know, I've been talking to the girls and they're kind of concerned about, you know, they have some concerns and some questions about if, you know, your cancer is real or not. I'm just giving you a heads up because you know how the girl, these women are in this group and you know how some of our friends can be friends can be in this group you know they can always kind of nitpick and tear things apart until you know they feel like they got the truth so i'm just letting you know and me it's like well i don't really care you know it's my life to live like it's it's not up to them like this is my journey if i want to go online and go on social media and share that i might have cancer or not or whatever it's like that's just what i'm using my platform for because you know i she i guess me it just felt like she was doing the right thing using her platform to help others or spread the word whatever so I'm not trying to bash me or beat me down, but something just is a little off about that whole cancer thing and how she went about it. That's all I'm going to say. But when we first get to the scene with Mia, she starts talking about how she's like, we moved to Potomac. Hey, we live in Potomac now. But then she's like, but we're renting. We live up the street from Karen, but we're renting. So you move up to, you move to Potomac. You live in a big ass house. You're paying $10,000 a month. But then she says, we're renting um the kids love it it just makes more sense so the fact that you're here saying you put sixty five thousand dollars mia into renovations that that's a lot of money like that's a lot of money to um be putting into a house that's that's not going to be yours so it's like what, what was the point of that if you if it's like is it temporary is it not like are you renting to own like why would you sit there and put sixty five thousand dollars into renovations mia that just doesn't make any sense and then on top of that now you're paying um, ten thousand dollars a month. Like, where are you guys getting this money from? Like, this just doesn't even make any sense. Like, where are you getting this money from to rent? Like, that that makes no sense to me. So she's like, uh, we moved to Potomac. It's a rental, but we love it. It just makes sense. We love being in Potomac. We put sixty five thousand dollars into renovations, and we pay ten thousand dollars a month in rent. It's a little pricey, but it's worth it. And whose world? That is not. That's not worth it, Mia. That that's actually kind of ridiculous. And again, this is what I mean. Like Mia's stories just sometimes just don't make any sense. Like, why are you renting? Like, you're supposed to be this boss, bitch. You know, you got all this money. Even that too, she posted online. We move home. I think she even put. I could be wrong, but I could have sworn she made it seem like she bought the house. They moved because I do remember a couple months ago, Mia going online posting that they moved to a big house and she loves it because they lived in like a condo or like a penthouse. So like now they actually live. You know, they have a home with a yard and it's like in the neighborhood, it's an actual house and, you know, it's good for the kids or whatever. But now she's saying she rents it. I don't know. Mia confuses me sometimes. She really does. Mia confuses me. Like, I don't, sometimes it's like hard. Like, I feel like this season is going to be hard to keep up with Mia. Like, it really is. The Wendy is going to Bar Wine, Peter's, uh, Re Peter Thomas's uh, restaurant in Maryland, I believe. I haven't been I haven't been there, but I have like been out the outside of the restaurant and you know on the harbor and everything. And I actually met Peter Thomas really quickly. He was like outside, and I'm like, oh my god, that's Peter Thomas. I'm like, I'm gonna ask him if I can get a picture. I'm gonna try to insert the picture here, but I was like, I'm gonna ask if I can get a picture. So I'm like, I went up to him. I'm like, hey Peter. It's like the way his restaurant is is like you. Can, it's like outdoor dining, but it's also kind of like it's basically like outdoor dining. It's like ch like loungy chairs, but at the same time, it's like you can still sit out there and eat or whatever. So like if I'm walking it along the sidewalk, I can literally, you know, you guys know what outdoor dining. I feel like I'm always over explaining outdoor dining. So I'm like walked up to the restaurant. I'm like, I saw him in the restaurant because the restaurant's like big open glass, so you can see like directly into the restaurant. So I'm like, he's in there, he's in there. Then eventually he comes out and I'm kind of like stalking the restaurant a little bit, like a couple minutes. I'm like, he's in there. I'm like, he comes out. I'm like, I'm going to ask him for a photo. He's sitting there, he's talking. So I like walk up to the restaurant. 
well, I'm, I walk up the sidewalk and I walk over to the restaurant. I'm like, hey, Peter, like, I'm a fan of Housewives. Like, can I get a picture with you? He's like, yeah, man, come on. And he, like, stands up really quickly. And I think I have my camera. He's like, I got it. He's like, I'll do it. And he, like, kind of took my phone and he, like, took the selfie himself. And um, I don't know. I just thought that was cool. So I met Peter Thomas over the summertime. Anyway, so Wendy is uh, going to Peter Thomas's restaurant, Bar One in Maryland, basically trying to ask him for some advice because Wendy is trying to be an entrepreneur. She has her book. She has her candle line. What else does Wendy do besides her, like you know her political and her commentary and being a professor? But I feel like Wendy slowly is trying to like leave that like uh career field as uh, as far as like you know being political commentator and being a professor and she wants to just have more uh financial freedom by being you know more of an entrepreneur and i feel like a lot of times you know she probably just did a lot of that stuff to please her parents and to make sure you know she had uh, a great job and career and finances and stuff like that coming in because you know being african-american and stuff like that like it's a lot of pressure to make it succeed and have a um a good job go to college that's what your parents beat over your head and stuff like that so i feel like now that wendy kind of made it um she even said it too she was like my mom like forced me to go to school being Af nigerian and everything else like that it's like you have no other choice but to go to school but um i think her mom now that her mom sees just like the cameras and the glitz and the glam of wendy being on uh reality tv i think her mom is a little will be a little more like forgiving and understanding and mia you know like i said wants to just open restaurants and be an entrepreneur and be more of like a you know a reality tv star influence or whatever you want to call it um her mom even said it too like well you're on tv now so like you made it like her mom made a comment or something like that like last season to where it's like when wendy presented to her mom like hey mom i want to kind of do this i want to come do that kind of you know do something a little different outside of my career. Her mom was a little more like, okay. And she was like, really? Like, you don't care? Her mom's like, no. Like, and I think, again, her mom just is excited that her, her daughter's on TV. So uh, Wendy sits down with, with, with Peter Thomas. She tells her, she tells Peter, like, hey, Peter, like, I, she's coming to him for some advice. She's like, Peter, I want to open a restaurant. And, but I don't know. You know, I just need some advice. I need some help. She said she didn't initially go to Peter, but she said Peter kind of overheard some of her conversations that she was having while she was at his restaurant one day with a few friends. And he kind of chimed in and was like, hey, I can help you. I can help you open a, a restaurant, et cetera, et cetera. So she was like, let me just meet up with Peter basically and see what he has to say. You know, pick his brain and pick each other's brain and see, you know, see if going into business with Peter makes sense, which I don't really think it does because Peter hasn't had much luck with, luck with opening restaurants. I know he has the bar one in Maryland and i know he has another bar one in miami i think those two restaurants are doing pretty good they're doing pretty decent the food at his restaurants look really good actually i'm not even gonna lie um every time i'm in miami the last few times I've, I've been in miami i've been wanting to because even when you're going into miami it's like right there when you're like uh crossing over star island and everything like that and you're like literally driving into south beach and peter's restaurant is like right there on the water and i'm like that's peter thomas's restaurant i want to go there we just never went and then being in Baltimore this summer, I remember, I think two years, two summers ago, we were in Baltimore, Maryland, and the restaurant wasn't open yet, but it said like bar one coming soon, whatever, whatever. And then this summer, summer 2022, his restaurant is finally open and it looked like it's been getting business, like from like what I see on social media and just from that night when I met him, like it, it looked pretty busy. So his restaurants finally seem to be doing good and keeping afloat and bringing in the profit. Um, compared to when he was opening restaurants and doing businesses when he was on Real Housewives of Atlanta. I feel like he probably finally got it together, finally, you know, figure figure things out. He's he's able to, like, you know, maintain his businesses better than he did before because Peter kind of has this bad reputation of opening businesses and not being able to maintain them, going to debt, you know, owing taxes, et cetera, et cetera. It's like not, uh, you know, Peter doesn't have a good light around him when it comes to, being a restaurant owner and opening businesses and stuff like that. Even Cynthia, he likes, that was a, the thing that kind of uh, pulled him and Cynthia apart was because he was kind of like draining them financially, trying to open these businesses and stay afloat. And I think Cynthia was investing in some of the businesses and she just never got a return. So when he got a divorce, um, I think Cynthia was suing Peter for like $100,000 or something like that. And I'm not sure if she got it back, if she ended up just dropping it. But I know like, I think, Right after Cynthia got done with Housewives, 
it was like all over the blogs that she was trying to sue Peter for like a hundred thousand dollars because she never got her money. But I don't know. It seems like Peter's restaurants are doing a lot better. But Wendy, don't go into business with Peter. Like now, Ashley. Ashley ha takes her two sons over to her uncle's house, and they're having dinner. I don't know what they're eating. It was just a bunch of takeout. I think she said tacos. So Ashley goes to her uncle's house, and she's with her mom, her uncle. And her aunt and her two sons and they're basically just again talking about her divorce and her family's just so confused by it all like actually it doesn't make any sense like you want to divorce michael but at the same time you are trying to still go into different things with him and joint ventures with him that just doesn't make any sense if you are getting a divorce or separation you need to start doing things on your own independently and and working on having your own separate from michael and she's just kind of like she's not really seeing it that way and she's kind of like making this whole divorce separation more confusing than it needs to be i don't even really think she really is getting a divorce but that's a whole nother like story that's a whole nother that's i don't think ashley is getting a divorce from michael i think it's kind of like i think they're more so coming to more of an understanding and um it's just easier to say they're getting a divorce. It's just easier to say they're getting a divorce so that way Michael doesn't have to film. He doesn't have to be on camera as much. And then it also might free up Ashley to have a little bit more of a storyline outside of Michael. I'm dating. I'm this. I'm that. I'm, I'm you know, I'm I'm dipping into the lady pond. Like, you know, kind of like a Kim Zosiac. Just doing whatever she wants because she doesn't necessarily have, um, you know, somebody like a husband around. So kind of like, oh, Ashley's dating a girl. Ashley's dating a new guy. So I feel like that's kind of what her and Michael are coming to, more of an understanding. But um, her trying to explain what's going on to everybody is just making everyone more and more confused. So when you tell one lie, Ashley, you're going to have to keep telling another to cover up the last one. So make sure you have all your ducks and lies in a row because after a while, it's, gonna, it's not going to make any sense because it already doesn't make any sense to a lot of us. So we get to Giselle's house. Her mismatch barnyard is finally coming together. So she's bragging about how, you know, uh, what what does she call her house? I don't even know what she calls her house, but she's like, we have a circle driveway. The house is coming together, blah, 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 blah. The house still looks a mess from the outside. So she's just walking around her room trying to figure out an outfit to wear to Karen's uh, spring fling party. She calls her two daughters and the twins. And she's like, just asking them, like, you know, what do you guys think about my outfits? And they're like, ew, mama, it's ugly. I thought you started buying new clothes. I thought we, you know, went and got you a new wardrobe. Like, what's going on? Where's all the new clothes you bought? Like, so they finally settled on, like, this jumper, this polka dot jumper. That still looks a mess. Like, I thought that was still kind of like, Ugh, don't wear that. Like, Giselle, like, less is more. Like, I don't know. Even the wig, like just the wig Giselle had on, like at Karen Spring, like she needs to like pluck the lace. It just looks like super wiggy and just like heavy on her head, rather than really, rather than it looking like it's a lace, like on her head. Like all these women are like updating their hairs, updating their wigs and their hairstyles, and and Giselle's the only one who's still wearing like these like party city costume, uh, Broadway like Tyler Perry wigs. So we get to Karen Spring Fling. Giselle arrives first. Ashley and Karen, I think, are talking about just how, you know, Ashley is supposed to be getting a divorce. It doesn't make any sense. Ashley arrives and um, they're like, hey, girl, we actually are talking about you. So Ashley's just like, oh, OK, like, what are you guys talking about? Whatever. And, and Giselle's just like the divorce thing. It just doesn't make any sense. I feel like you're lying to me. I feel like there's more to the story. You're saying you're getting a divorce from Michael, but you're saying you're still trying to buy a house and go into different ventures with him. And she's like, if you're getting a divorce, you don't you don't do things together when you're getting a divorce. Um, that's the whole purpose of getting a divorce. You guys are separating. You guys are, are your lives are going to be apart. So why are you now doing things that are going to keep you together? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, Karen's kind of added her two cents. Like, yeah, that actually, that doesn't really, that doesn't really make any sense. And Wendy's just walking around, making her rounds. And she finally goes up to, Gis to Giselle. Like, hey, Giselle, how are you, girl? Like, how? And Giselle's like, uh, don't touch me. No hugs. Don't touch me. Don't like, I'm good. But Wendy is like, hey, Giselle, you look beautiful. How are you? And Giselle's like, I'm, I'm, are you speaking to me? And she's like, yeah, how are you? Like, hey. And she's like, don't talk, girl, don't touch me. No hugs. Don't touch me. I'm good. I'm, I'm actually, be I'm beautiful. I'm great. I'm good. I'm living my life. Like, shut up, Giselle. Please shut up. Like, you can honestly tell, like, Wendy's just trying to be the bigger person by even speaking to you. And you're still somehow trying to make yourself the victim in a situation. 
And that's one thing I don't like about Giselle. She makes herself the victim in every situation that she orchestrates. It's like you literally sit here and you cause drama with people, but the moment they bark back and defend themselves, you somehow end up making yourself the victim because someone's sticking up for themselves. Mind you, if you never would have poked your nose where it didn't belong, if we never, you know, none of this would have happened. If you would have just let Wendy be, never questioned if Eddie was cheating on her or anything like that, it would have, you guys would have been good. You guys were already good. Giselle does this to every single person. She causes drama with them, but then she tries to disguise it or paint it as, I'm just concerned, I'm just making sure you good. But then pull me to the side and ask me if I'm okay. Or, you know, send me a little quick text message. Don't bring it to the group and make it seem like, you know, my world is falling apart and you're blasting me for it. And the moment I defend myself, defend my family, defend my, you know, my life as a whole, as a whole you want to somehow get offended by it, Giselle, because I'm now defending myself. You told Wendy she was doing too much, the boob job, the this, the that. And the moment Wendy was like, chill on me, like, I'm good, chill on me. It was like, oh, I don't like your attitude, Wendy. I don't like your attitude. And is Eddie cheating on you? Is that why you're, it's like, y'all didn't, y'all weren't showing concern. Same thing when Mia arrives. Mia comes a little bit later too. And um, Giselle's like, Hey, Mia, can I talk to you? So she's like, yeah, yeah, what's up? So she gives her a hug, say, hey, hey, girl, hey. She's like, is this what cancer looks like? Is this what cancer looks like? And just, and Mia's like, what? And she and Giselle's like, is this what, like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, do you have cancer? Do you not have cancer? And it's like, again, here you go again, Giselle's like, now, the moment Mia fucking bites your, bites your neck off, then that's going to be an issue. Instead of you just really pulling her to the side, being concerned, like, hey, girl, like, you know, I just wanted to make sure everything was okay because, you know, the post was a little confusing. It's like me, like Giselle is even like, as your friend, as your friend, like, come on. As her friend, you guys would have picked the phone up. I think Robin said she sent her a text message. Like, if I found out my friend had cancer or thought my friend had cancer, I'm going to at least call you. Wendy was being a bigger person. And sometimes you can tell where a person is in life just based on how they hold on to things and how they just... Just never let things go sometimes. And I feel like you can just see it like Wendy is just doing her thing. She's got her businesses going, entrepreneur. You know, Wendy just, if, even if you look at Wendy on social media, she just looks more, looks like she's just thriving more. She just, you know, just has a lot going on that she doesn't have to wear. That she, once those cameras start rolling, she really just doesn't have time to harp on. Giselle said this and that about my marriage. It's like, I love how Giselle makes herself the victim in every situation. How are you the victim now, Giselle? You trashed my family all last year. No, you trashed her family all last year. You literally could have ruined her family. Like you really, you literally could have like, you trashed her family all last year. But when she came back at you with facts, now she's trashing your family. No, you came at her with gossip, allegations, and just things that could really like ruin a friendship and her relationship if she if Wendy was this gullible type of woman or if their if their uh their marriage wasn't strong and, and solid, you could have really ruined them. Like and you thought you were coming at her with what? Being a good friend by by trying to blast Eddie on camera that he's supposedly cheating on her and saying that's why she got her boobs done and this and that, please. If my friend's going to get their boobs done or something like that, I might not, not might not necessarily agree. I'll tell them like look you're beautiful without it, you don't need it. But when, if they gone and did it I'm going to be like, okay, your boobs look good. like, Or even they went and got a nose job and the nose job comes out like this. I'm going to be like, oh, wow. The nose job looks good. Leave it late. I'll be like, leave it at that. Don't get another one. Just leave it at that. Your nose job looks great. But it's just like to sit there and bash your friend over the, like the life decisions that they're making when they're, they're innocent life decisions. And Giselle's like, you're not, you, you were not a friend to Wendy last year. You weren't. So when she defended herself and defended her life and her marriage and, you know, the choices... And this, the decision she decided to make were to her body is like, now what? She was wrong. She was disrespecting you. No, you were being disrespectful. Caring, but Giselle kept saying, uh, when they were confronting Mia about the cancer scare, Giselle's like, well, Mia, uh, Karen thought the same thing. And, and Karen's like, I didn't think the same thing. Karen's like, I didn't say that. She said, I think, she said, I, you, Mia, you went about it a little bit differently than I did, but I said, we should hear you out. I never said that you were lying. We didn't believe you. I just said you did. I wouldn't have necessarily ran to social media. So Mia's just basically like, okay, Giselle, the fact that you sit here and you think that I'm lying when I'm not, like this is cancer, this is my life. F you, Giselle, F you. And Giselle's like, what? F me? And it, the, the show like goes off. So we have next week, like I was saying, so you got Jacqueline, Mia's friend. 
she's going to be jumping in, getting in with the mess and stuff like that. I think Sharice was there as well. All the ladies were there. Oh, my God. I forgot to mention Katie. Katie's ass was there. Did they show Katie? I feel like I was watching, like, clips from next week's episode. And then I was watching also this episode, too. Like, once the episode went off, I was watching, like, little clips online. But Katie was there. She had a bald head, green eyes, and everything like that. And um, she's walking around still looking cuckoo and crazy. But uh, they're like, Ray, Katie's here. Katie's here. And um, they're like, uh, Katie, Ray said he had a crush on you. And Katie's like, huh? That is so funny that Katie is just so out of the loop that she didn't even know, like, the whole game that they played at Ray's, uh, Karen and Ray's house. Where Ray is like, uh, if I could have my way with one of the housewives, it would be Katie. I have a crush on Katie. And they're, like, trying to tell Katie, like, about the game. And Katie's like, what? Ray said all that about me? So she's hugging and rubbing all on Ray and everything. But the season is off to a good start, you guys. I'm excited for it. I've been looking forward to it. Looking forward to it because Atlanta Housewives, they just aren't doing it for me anymore. I want to say that I feel like Potomac works because these women are real friends. At least the core of them are real friends. And even if they aren't real friends, um, no, the core of them are real friends. But I don't want to say like Ashley. I think Ashley was kind of like put into the group. But just it, I feel like that's what works with Potomac. Like you had Sharice and, and uh, Robin knowing each other now for almost 20 years. I think she said they met in like 2002. And then from there, Robin and Giselle became friends. Karen has always been around. I'm not sure how Karen got intermingled into the group. But it's like they all kind of knew each other rather than um, as opposed to like Atlanta where you got like all these different people just coming from all different walks of life and wherever they're from, moving to Atlanta in hopes of being on the housewives. Sonya's not from Atlanta. Kenya's not from Atlanta. I don't think Drew is from Atlanta. And even if they were or weren't from Atlanta, what what works, it helps the show is that they are all friends. Potomac helps. Potomac works a little bit better because, like I said, the core of the group started out as they were all friends or they were all at least familiar with, familiar with each other uh, prior to filming. And I think that's what works with Potomac. But anyway, guys, that is Real Housewives of Potomac season seven, episode one. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. I want to hear from you guys in the comments. I really enjoyed doing these videos. This video is really long. I told myself I was going to only do about like 20 minutes, 18 minutes. But as you can see, I started rambling and talking, but um, like, comment, and subscribe guys. I'll see you guys in the next video and let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Did you like it? Did you not? Are you excited? uh for season seven i'm always excited for for potomac because it's like even though you have your characters that you don't like or that you do like some you like more than others it's like they all come to film a show and they give us that the last i want to say i think season five sad to say even though monique that whole fight with monique i think it did kind of help a lot of people who were sleeping on potomac kind of start tuning in but other than that season seven is pretty good like comment and subscribe guys i'll see you in the next video okay bye